How you guys doing? Welcome inside my new grow room. This is Indoor Hydroponics and I am John, your Indoor Hydroponic Test Dummy. Hey guys, uh, I'm real excited about today because today, uh, I, well, let me preface this. I've been growing hydroponically for three years now and I've yet to take on this challenge. And this is one I've really been looking forward to, so I'm kind of excited to share how I've got this set up with you guys. Uh, this is a hydroponic strawberry grow and I'm super geeked about it. I've done a lot of research on it. I've looked at a lot of videos on it and uh, you know I think I've mimicked the right environment to have a successful strawberry grow so I may have egg on my face in 30 days or 60 days I might kill these things off but hopefully you'll stay tuned and check out the progress as these things grow. So this first video is going to talk about my plan, my setup, what type of uh, strawberries I've got, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about strawberry types, uh, we'll get into that in a minute, and we'll talk about nutrient, lighting, that type of stuff, okay? But most importantly, we're going to get started today and we're going to plant these things, okay? So if you want to see like a strawberry grow and this thing kicking out strawberries, you're going to have to tune back and come back, okay guys? So I hope you do. Um, so first off, let's talk just briefly about the different types of strawberries that are out there, right? You've got everyone that's familiar with the strawberry thing has heard of the three types of strawberries. Day neutral, June bearing, ever bearing. What is the difference in those three? And I need things dumbed down up here for, for this thing, for all this stuff to make sense. And in all three different types of strawberries, they all leave you wanting a little bit more. There's no perfect strawberry plant from what I'm researching, okay? So what do I mean by that? Let's talk day neutral. Day neutral will produce strawberries their very first year and they'll produce them from spring all the way to fall. And you might think, okay, that's cool. They're gonna continue to flower, right? The only drawback about day neutral strawberries is, is from what I've read, they only produce smaller to medium sized strawberries, but you'll get a good crop, okay? but not very big. Now, this baby right here is our June bearing strawberry, okay? And now the problem with the June bearing strawberry is, is that during their first year, they're not gonna produce very much. This plant is getting established, established and the following year is when you get your bumper crop. Now the cool thing about June bearing strawberries is that they produce really large strawberries in abundance in the month of June, okay? And beyond that, once that crop is done, the plant goes back to rest, it gets ready for the next cycle the following year. Not a very good plant, I'm thinking, to grow hydroponically. I could be wrong, so I didn't. I've completely ruled out June bearing strawberries. And now, oh, oh sorry. And now um, is my last one, which is the ever bearing one. Now, the ever bearing one, you would think. It's kind of a misnomer, right? You think, okay, this thing's going to just kick out strawberries from spring all the way to fall. Well, not necessarily, okay? They will give you a nice crop in the spring. When the temperatures of summer reach a certain point, the production kicks down. You're going to get a few strawberries here and there. And then in the fall, when the, when the heat breaks, you're going to get another bumper crop. So really, it's a two-cropper kind of thing, right? So the two varieties that I'm thinking about growing and that I've purchased, okay, at my local nursery, and by the way, these are the only two varieties that I have to choose from from my local nursery, so I'm kind of stuck here. But uh, I've gone with one day neutral and one ever bearing, okay? And so what do I got here to choose from? Let me so show when you. I pick out my strawberries, or, or whenever I start anything hydroponically, I always start out with a plan, I always research it before I plan it. I want to know, am I going to give these things the right environment, right? So what do I got here? This particular strawberry variety is called TriStar, okay, and it's a day neutral. Remember, that's the, this is the type of strawberry that's going to kick out those little strawberries from spring all the way to fall. Okay, so I'm going to get a decent crop out of these things, especially the first year. So I like that. This is going to give me a lot of production, okay? And so I am uh, going to do two gardens this year, okay? I actually have 20 of these plants, and I'm going to do some outside and some hydroponically. Right now, I'm trying to figure out what I want to grow hydroponically, okay? So, what's my second variety? 
Now my, now my second variety is called Quinault, Q-U-I-N-A-L-T. And this is our ever-bearing variety, okay? And this is supposed to kick out um, strawberries in the spring when the heat of summer kicks on. Again, it's gonna, the production's gonna come down and then in the fall it's gonna give me another nice crop, okay? Now, I don't like the fact that it's going to temper down in the middle of the summer, okay? Because I, I want, if I'm gonna grow hydroponically, I want it to grow the entire summer, okay? So this right here, um, it's kind of up in the air, so what did I choose? Well, let's see. Say hello to my little friends. This is Tony Montana. He'll be keeping an eye on this girl for the entire time. Why? Because spider mites are scared of Tony Montana. These are my new plants, guys. And what variety, what variety did I choose? I chose the quinolts. Why did I choose quinault? Well, a couple of reasons, right? One is these produce a little bit bigger berries. I want the bigger berries grown inside. I have, uh, I will plant the tri, or the, the tri stars outside in the garden, and they are going to produce a big crop of smaller berries. And I don't mind sharing those with the critters. Okay, what I do mind is sharing the bigger berries with the critters. Okay, so I'm going to grow the bigger berries inside here. Secondly. What's really cool is, is growing hydroponically, you get to control your environment. It's not going to be summer heat in here, which means these may produce during the hot periods of summer because they're grown inside. And I'm hoping I can get a good production out of these spring, summer, into fall, and who knows, maybe even further. We'll find out. I don't know how this is going to work, okay? What do I got set up right here, guys? I have a 16 gallon black tote underneath, uh, underneath this poly shield here. It's a cement mixing tub. I've showed you before on one of my lettuce videos of, of, of that setup. Now, underneath that, uh, I've got it filled up. I've got some nutrient in it. Using good old trusty Dynagrow here, and I've got the uh, solution set to 750 parts per million. This is an acidic based. Uh, nutrient solution. So what's good about that is, is it does bring the pH down, but not enough. In addition, I put some pH down in, okay, and I've got it set to about 5.8. Why? Why so low? That is, that does seem kind of low, right, guys? Well, the reason is, is as the plants consume these nutrients in here by nature of this product, as this is being consumed out, the pH is going to come up gradually, 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 and then it's going to level off, okay? And my intent here is to continually top this up, but I'm not going to do reservoir changes for every 30 days, okay? So this is a set it and forget it kind of method, okay? I've got a poly shield. Um, go to your local Home Depot. Go to the insulation section. They have this stuff called poly shield. You set it on top of your reservoir, cut some two inch holes in the top, and sink some net cups in it. And that's what's going to happen here, guys. I'm just going to place these in. I'm going to set it and forget it. In addition, I have one other thing going on. Now, this isn't necessarily necessary, but I do have one air stone circulating on this. Now you could grow these probably cracky style, right? But I want to add a little bit of airflow in here. And so I've got one two inch air stone connected to a pump on the other side of the room here. And this is going to provide the oxygen to the roots and I'm hoping to keep them nice and clean and white because I've noticed in a lot of people's strawberry videos that the, that the roots get, they, they, they're, they're susceptible to root rot, they turn brown and blackish and stuff like that. I want these things white and healthy, and I think the oxygen is going to help a lot. So I got my plants cleaned off. They've got as much of the dirt off as possible. I've got my two-inch net pot, and I have a bucket full of Grodon, Grodon, Grodon. Uh, it, they're clay pellets, okay? They're heated clay pellets that you can reuse. They're an excellent growing medium. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get me a little bit of them on the bottom of this cup. I'm going to take my plant and gently put these babies in there like this, okay? And then I'm going to fill around them with the grow down.
and I'm going to press it in pretty good because I want all the roots down in there and what they're going to end up doing, okay, they may look a little root bound now and you could probably poke some holes in here and, and release the roots down, but what it's going to do is, the plants aren't stupid, okay, they're going to they're gonna go and start poking through these holes here in no time. So uh, I'm going to trust that to happen and so I'm going to then place it right in their new home like that and the roots are going to release down. So let's finish this up. So that's it guys. Uh, these plants are in their their final resting place for the duration of the grow. Again, this is super simple. Reservoir, air pump, poly shield, a little bit of plant action going on in here. They're going to be underneath a couple of shop lights. They're T8 bulbs, okay, and they're set to daylight, so they're the high output ones. Uh, does not cost a whole lot to operate these things, but I'm going to talk about that in a future video because on the other side of this table, I'm going to be growing something different and I want to talk about the cost of operation here. And so that's going to be probably be my next video or, well, I got about four or five videos coming up, man. Lots of stuff going on hydroponically, lots of stuff getting ready for spring, going out in the dirt. Okay, so be sure to like and subscribe. Come back, check me out. Um, this has been a really fun experience. I'm about 100 subscribers into this thing, and I cannot believe 100 people actually chose to click the subscribe button and listen to my rant, rants and ramblings, you know? And I've met a lot of people through uh, the web here that have been absolutely, positively amazing. Uh, very good comments, very good discussions, uh, very good positive reinforcement. I love that couple of negative comments here and there, but that doesn't bother me much, okay, because uh, this has just been a fun little deal, and there's more positive people out there than there are negative, uh, and, and it's just been an awesome experience, so thanks again for checking me out. Hey, uh, come back and check me out in about a month. Let's see how these babies are doing. Take care, guys. Bye.